This here is a battery, a red battery. This here is a cable, a purple cable. The colors are irrelevant. It's what they go into and connect to that make a difference because this is my iPhone and I'm using it right now as a monitor. Well, not right now because I'm filming myself, but I, I was a minute ago. A fully featured monitor, a highly fully featured monitor via the Axoon Simo, which, no, that's the battery. The white part, that's the Axoon Simo. And this is a device which takes the HDMI signal from any camera that has an HDMI signal or anything that has an HDMI signal, like a PlayStation, for example. Well, a newer PlayStation with the HDMI. And it takes that video signal and outputs it from a USB-C into the phone via lightning connector, because that's what Apple use, apart from on the newer iPad Pros, because they have a USB-C on there. And this also works with those. That makes a really nice big monitor, but I tried to put my 12 point whatever inch iPad on there, and it felt a little bit too big. I do like a big monitor though. I'm a bit torn. And this is something that I've wanted to be able to do with my iPhone ever since the first iPhone came out in 1963. And finally, after all of these years, able to do it, been able to do it very, very well. Apple are very restrictive about their operating system, unlike Android. So getting the iPhone to accept an HDMI input is a very difficult challenge. There may be more, but I can only find one other device that lets you do something like this, and that's a screen port, which is SDI only, and £840 for the cheapest one. The SEMO is a fair bit cheaper, at around £160. It accepts an input of up to 1080p, 60p, and you use Axoon's really rather wonderful C monitor app to view this signal. You can see in the top left here that my input is showing as 1080p, 50p. That's because this is from the Sony FX30. Recording in 25p or 30p, then it will output from the HDMI as 50p and 60p but it will still look like the original frame rate. 24p though, does come in as 24p. But you gotta make sure they're not set to auto in the menu. My Fuji and Canon cameras output their exact frame rates. From my test, the SEMO had roughly the same lag as a good HDMI monitor. Even the built-in LCD of your camera is going to have lag. We're talking barely a 40 millisecond lag from the FX30, which is pretty impressive. The Axoon C app is absolutely key to making this work so well. It's absolutely stuffed with features and is very easy to use. Rather than go through every feature the C app has, I'm just going to list the ones that I use. You can tweak most of these in the settings of the app. There's waveforms, histograms, false color, peaking, zebras, anamorphic D squeeze, markers, grids, audio meters. Yes, you can monitor audio through your AirPods, but there will be a bit of a lag. There's mirror flip for when you're in front of the camera, screenshots, image overlay, and there's full 3D LUT support. You can simply add your own by airdropping them to your phone or iPad. Two of the biggest features are the ability to record as well as live stream directly from the app. They do make a version of this for Android, it's called the M1. And I've had that for quite a while, beginning of the year or so I got it. And it's very good. I mean, it's very similar. I'll wait for the train. But this is better. And it's not an Android versus iOS thing. It's got much better hardware in it. The M1 is actually about half the price. And it's, it's still very good for what it does because it still uses the really nice app. It's just that this has got a much better looking image because it's got a higher bit rate 
and that works a lot better with our recordings. And that is an important thing for me, being able to record on here. Now, this doesn't mean it's a replacement for something like an Atomos Ninja 5, or it's 5, not V, because it's 5 inches. Just keep saying that, but I need to remind people who keep saying that incorrectly. Or the Blackmagic Video Assist. Because it's only 1080p up to 60p. So if you're recording 4K or 8K, then no, it won't record that. But the quality is actually surprisingly good, considering it is only 8 bit and 30 megabits a second. And then you can just upload it to a client if need be really quickly or to social media if you do that sort of thing. It's great when you want to put on the menus like I do and film for reviews, but it's a very specialist thing. The only thing is you do want to record and have the LUT on there. Right now it isn't supported, but hopefully they will because personally I would like to have my S-Log3 footage I'm sending into here record in what I'm seeing on there with the LUT because that's going to be much more useful for me to send to clients and also for social media. I'm not going to upload any S-Log footage to TikTok, am I? People aren't going to know what the hell's going on there. It needs to have colour. It needs to have a LUT. So hopefully, back soon, let us record the LUT we are. There's one really important thing to know about the app recordings, especially if you want to use them as proxies, is that you may sometimes find the frame rates to be slightly off. This is nothing to do with the CMO or the app. It's something you get with all smartphones, both iOS and Android. And for any video recordings, including from their cameras and third-party apps like Filmic Pro. When you choose your frame rate, that is only a target, as the recordings are variable frame rate. So if you want to use proxies for editing, then I personally would recommend recording them in camera if you have that ability, rather than the SEMA ones, because they are dead on, and also very importantly, have the same clip name. But if you do want to use them, then you should use the open source app Handbrake, which will convert your variable frame rate clips to constant frame rate. Unfortunately, you can't just use any lightning cable. You do need to use one that's specific to this. It's got a specific type of connector. This is why it's been certified by Apple for this use. So if you are going to buy it, I do recommend getting a couple of spares if you're like me and you lose things. Yeah, I did lose my first one, but now I have six. So I should be okay, I hope. Whilst it is a terrific device, there is definitely room for improvement. It is a bit plasticky. I would much rather it was lovely and metal like Axun's other products. So I'm hoping that they'll bring out a, a metal pro version at some point. Maybe SDI on there as well, but I need to have both, not just HDMI, wait for the train. Unlike the Android version, this does not charge your phone at the same time, which is a downside, especially if you come out to do some filming with it and you've got to charge your phone up. So. Yes, this is a problem. There is a five volt output on the side here and you could use that to charge your phone, just not at the same time as using it as a monitor because there's only one input for some reason on the iPhones. Don't know why, but there is. So you have to unplug that. So when you're not using it, um, plug in the power into it, but not the cable from Axon because that doesn't give you power. You have to have another separate one, which I have. And so that will charge your phone, not super fast, only five volts, but it's a way of doing things. But it's not ideal, is it? Because when you're using a monitor, you want to have battery power throughout the day. An iPhone's not going to last all day, generally, with the full brightness on there. So what is the solution to that? I've got one. I'm going to show you right now. The only way to get power into the iPhone whilst the lightning port is taken up is by MagSafe at the rear of the phone. If you've got an older phone without MagSafe, then this won't work. The problem though is the phone cradle isn't deep enough to take a charger, let alone a MagSafe battery pack. But thankfully you can remove the SEMO from the phone cradle. They did this so you can clip it onto their upcoming iPad power cage. I bought the thinnest MagSafe charger I could find and I needed it to have a USB-C input on it rather than a fixed cable as that would be too messy. I then picked up this small rig USB battery clamp deep enough to take both the phone and the MagSafe charger. I unscrewed the rear part of the phone clamp and then super glued that to the small rig one. Don't super glue the SEMO directly onto anything else because it's going to stop you being able to put it onto any other devices. The phone and charger go into the small rig clamp, 
making sure that the charger input is accessible. Then it's just a case of plugging a USB-C cable into it and the other end, of course, into a battery pack. I personally wouldn't keep it connected the whole time as keeping the phone on charge does tend to make the iPhone a bit hot and could potentially dim the screen. I've got the Sony Xperia Pro, the only phone with a built-in HDMI input. It takes 4K and displays it on the really lovely 4K screen. But the biggest downside, other than the very high price, is the app that you need to use with it. Now they have improved it, but it's still missing peaking and LUT support, which are so important. It's a shame because I've got one and there's nothing neater or slicker out there. A very important question to address is why would you use the SEMO and your phone rather than a dedicated monitor? Because you can get some okay-ish monitors for around the same price as this. And there's some definitely big advantages to a dedicated monitor to one of these. First off, it's not your phone being used, so you can still use your phone for other things. Secondly, they have power, they'll have removable batteries, switchable batteries, which gets past the current issue we have with the CMO. They shouldn't overheat because they should have fans in if they're decent enough monitors, because iPhones, smartphones, iPads, they all overheat in the sun, so that's something to definitely consider. The CMO app is up there with the features of any really good monitor and it does surpass it in a number of ways and of course there is that ability to record now no monitors record because monitors that record are called recorders this is not a replacement for those but it is a very handy feature to have and the key thing about using a phone as a monitor of course is well first off you've pretty much always got it with you you still need to have this and a couple of cables mind you but yeah you should always have it with you even if you don't think you're gonna need a monitor doesn't take much kit to go out with one if needed and it's thin it's thin it's small and I don't know any other monitors which are like that I will be keeping the CMO in my kit bag as it's such a useful device and it takes up barely any space and weighs very little as I never leave home without my iPhone it means I'll always have a very high quality monitor with me when I'm out filming but I have to say, this iPad thing, the big ones, yeah, they're too big to go on a camera, but I've actually kind of really taken to using it with my iPad mini with its 8.3 inch screen size. It's nice and big, but not too big and still very light. It's kind of perfect.